Hi everyone, welcome to part two. Okay, Tal has just castled. And here Fisher played bishop g5, which is a move that all analysts, including himself, gave as an oversight. The correct continuation was bishop takes c6. Where best play goes, bishop takes c6. If instead queen takes c6, now comes bishop g5, threatening and pinning the knight. Now d4 and h4. Again with the idea of marching the h-pawn to victory and white has a winning position. So, bishop takes c6 it would have to be bishop takes c6 back. And now queen takes f7, d4, and queen takes c6, check. And bishop d7. If instead king b8, now knight g5, and black is hopeless, according to Fischer, and Fritz agrees. So it would be uh, after queen takes e6 check, bishop d7. And now queen takes e7 is um, you know a trap that's set with bishop d7. Because now does rook takes g2 check, and after king takes g2, there's a bishop h3 check, discovering an attack on the queen. But realistically, white is much better after king takes h3. Queen takes e7 and bishop g5, although this doesn't win the exchange because of rook h8 check, it doesn't matter, it won't be long before white consolidates his position and with a rook, two minor pieces and two pawns to boot against the queen, he'll win without much difficulty. Of course Tal didn't have to play that line, um, but it was preferable to bishop g5 in any case, which is what Fisher played. Because now Tal has knight takes e5, which is a move that Fisher writes he had simply underestimated in strength. In his own words, this sets off a dazzling array of fireworks. He thought Tal had merely been trying to confuse the issue, but Fritz gives Black as having a significant edge here, with the evaluation at minus 0 0.75 in Black's favour. Fisher continued with knight takes e5 and adds that he had initially been planning to play bishop takes d7 check, but he realized that after rook takes d7 and knight takes e5, which is better than bishop takes e7 because of knight takes f3 check, forcing king h1, and now queen takes h2 check and black is winning. After queen takes h2, knight takes h2, king takes h2, and rook takes e7, it's definitely strongly in black's favor and nearly two pawns up. So after rook takes d7, knight takes e5 would be better for white but it's still bad after queen takes e5 and bishop takes e7. And um, he had considered this, you know, and ostensibly it wins the rook here at g8 after rook takes e7. But here black has the Zwitschensug rook h8 winning the piece back with greater activity. For example, rook a e1, rook takes h7, rook takes e5, and rook takes e7. Where, Fisher writes, black's compact center pawns far outweigh white's past h pawn in strength. So, knight takes e5 is what Fisher played instead. And Tal continued with bishop takes b5, which is a move that indicated he was playing for the win. If instead he played tip for tats with queen takes e5 here, now bishop takes e7, rook h8, and rook f e1. If instead rook a e1, now queen b8, which is threatening mate on h2, if the white queen moves away from its defense of that square, where it looks like it has to because of this rook here on h8, but now white has bishop takes d7 check. But black still has a big edge after king takes d7 and bishop d6. Um, it's, you know, white isn't getting mated, but it's still much better for black after rook takes h7, etc. So, rook f e1 instead is what Fisher played. And now comes queen takes e1 check, rook takes e1. Uh, no, sorry, it's not what Fisher played. This is an alternative continuation. So queen takes e1, check, rook takes e1, rook takes h7, bishop takes d8, king takes d8, bishop takes d7, king takes d7, rook e3 is enough to secure white a decent position and even an edge overall 
in the game. So Tal avoided all of that and instead played bishop takes b5. And Fischer answered with knight takes f7. And white can keep the tension in the game instead here with bishop takes e7. And after queen takes e7, rook f e1, but still black is better. So instead of that, Fischer played knight takes f7. And now Tal played bishop takes f1, which is a great move. If instead rook d f8, then rook f b1, bishop c6, knight d6 check is okay because after queen takes d6, says queen takes e7, and this allows white to almost equalize again because uh, black is still retaining a small advantage overall in this position. However, bishop takes f1 keeps an advantage for black. So now comes knight takes d8, and at this moment white is a pawn up, and both sides have pieces on pre. However, Tal has the initiative, and this allows him to take on g5 now, which is the best move, apparently winning a piece. But no, because now white has knight takes e6, forking the queen and the rook, and saving his knight. But black is still better here now, because he has the shocker move, rook takes g2 check where incredibly the black bishop is immune and the only way for white to defend successfully is with the king h1 which is what Fischer played. Capturing instead would be a huge mistake. If king takes f1 now rook takes h2 attacking the white queen and note that the rook is defended by the black queen here on c7. And The best move available to white here is queen f7. If instead knight takes c7 then rook takes h7 and there's no way for white to defend against both king takes c7 and rook h1 check winning the rook here so it's completely lost for white so queen f7 is the correct move but now rook h1 check and suddenly black has a winning attack out of nowhere king g2 is the only move that avoids mate but now queen h2 check gives black an overall advantage of nearly six pawns so effectively it's game over so king h1 is the correct move for white. And now comes queen e5 from Tal. If instead queen c4 to try and hold on to the bishop, now comes queen takes e7, rook g8 with mating threats, but now knight f4 holds the position okay for white, and in actual fact gives white an, an advantage in every continuation. If queen takes f4, then queen e6 check, king c7, queen takes g8, and white is winning. So queen e5 instead is what Tal played. And now came rook takes f1 and queen takes e6, which is the best that black can hope for, although it loses the exchange, it ends up okay. Um, if instead rook g6, choosing to save the rook, now queen takes e7, rook takes e6, queen f8 check, rook e8, and queen f3 favors white, according to Fischer. So queen takes e6, now king takes g2 and queen g4 check and at this point after all those fireworks the players agreed to a draw seeing as black can force one now with perpetual check because white only has one move so king h1 now simply queen f3 check king g1 queen g4 check king h1 etc so it was a great game anyway we can have a replay quickly um, Here we go. Yeah, only players of this caliber could produce such a crazy sharp game and uh, end up it being a draw. It's just a pretty incredible but a great game nonetheless. And yeah, Tal played the uh, French defenser. It's very unlike him. French isn't his style at all. As I was saying, the Sicilian is much more the way that he liked to play. Um, but as I was saying in the introduction, it was a psychological shot and well there's there's a famous interview with Bobby Fischer actually, it's on YouTube, where he says that any top chess player has to be a master psychologist and very good at mind games and uh, the like. And Tao's French defence there was certainly an example of that. so much going on 
all at once in this game. Nothing more boring than those tit for tat games. You know, you want activity all over the place. This uh, m makes for much more interesting games, which is certainly what these two provided here. So that's it. That's the final position and a great game. And there's actually a photograph on the internet of the game in place. I think Fisher just played Queen G4 and Tal's about to play Knight E7. So there they are. Clash of Titans. So that's it anyway. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.